making your way in the world today you really need a pod why don't you put your headphones in and give this one a shot wouldn't you like to just listen away and go to a place where everybody knows who you are listen to two guys brew ha ha cold street brewery and full buddy cast two of the greatest names why don't you go and listen to this episode I'm not. I'm not that good at uh, describing things. Uh, all right, everyone. Well, let me just tell you this. Hello. We. That was Sean. Hello. Sean McDonald from Cole <laughs> Street. We are uh, powering through these podcasts. Um, no, we're not. We're drinking beer. And we're drinking beer. And let me just tell you, we're going to see how the quality of these things turn out towards the end. <laughs> it's going to get good. But we're we're doing an experiment of just absolutely. Powering. Powering through, recording several, but as you drink and you record... They get better. They might get a little bit better and harder for me to edit. So, we'll see how much I hate myself. <laughs> not my job. Let's see if future my Travis to, hates this. My, my job is to make beer, <laughs> drink beer, and talk beer. Uh, this is Brew Ha Ha. Full Body Cast presents Brew Ha Ha. It is a podcast with Sean McDonald, the owner and brewer and brewmeister and meister brewer of... Coal Street Brewery. Um, we talk about. Is there too much water in that? Yeah, water down beer. Play. There we go. Don't want to water down beer. Uh, we are uh, just randomly talking about specific things. Just randomly <laughs> about specific things. <laughs> well, no, let's talk about this beer first. <clears throat> I'm not even going to hand you this beer. Okay, so we're ready to talk about this beer. Okay, I just poured this beer. Okay, let's clink it. Okay, clink it. In Don't front put of it my... to your face yet. Okay, I won't. Now put it to your face and tell me what what you, what. Put beer it to is. my face or drink it. Smell it. Don't drink it. Smell it. What beer is this? I got COVID, so I can't smell or taste anything. I'm kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> Too late. I, it smells a little lemony. I don't know. We'll take it. Take it. Mm-hmm. Now take a drink. What beer is this? <sighs> this is Pine Saw. <laughs> <It's> pine- <laughs> <laughs> this is the Christmas beer. No, no? It is, no, no, it's not. No, so this is my margarita beer. Oh, so, so you're right on on the first smell, lemon, lime, and salt. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so this beer I put out like in August, um, but to be perfectly honest, everybody's like, "Oh, bring it back." I brought it back. It's selling better now, nice than it was in August because everybody's wishing it was still summertime. <laughs> um, That's actually a, a cool idea. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I don't want it's, it's tasty. I'm talking about this beer right now, but I do. Our our next beer is my holiday. That's you know uh, got coconut and uh, pineapple. But this one, it doesn't um, taste like pine salt. Everybody, that was a, that was a joke. But it does have that lemony lime flavor, mm-hmm. which is really little... really light, crisp, super good, refreshing. What's the what's the uh, super low? It's five percent. What's the so. APR on this? <laughs> a- APR <laughs> a- ABV is five percent. Uh, Good. This I, is this I is going to be a decent podcast of me not five. okay. Well, how long does it take to brew this? Real quick, let's go through the the beer facts. Uh, beer facts. So this is super light. It's a super light lager. Yeah, uh, lagers take a lot longer. Um, that being said, like ingredients wise, there's nothing to it. It's a super cheap beer. That's why it's uh, easier for me to do. But you um, charge the same. Cool, interesting. <laughs> It takes longer, so you oh, have to, so it's man hours. Yeah, okay. so it takes, evens it out. So on this one, I see it saying. takes three weeks to ferment. Then you have to put it in um, into the kegs and put it in your fridge and and lager it. Uh, lagering comes from a German term where they used to throw it in caves back in the day. Um, a lot of lagers, like everybody knows about Oktoberfest, that's a lager. Yeah, um, they would actually brew that in like springtime, but then they bring it out in October. This so actually that's approximately how long it takes before it's ready. I was gonna say when I so, when I took a swig of this. I mean, obviously, it's a margarita beer, whatever you want to call it. I, I, I call it margarita beer. Okay, so I... I think it tastes like a margarita. That's why I call it that. It reminds me of spring. Like, I don't know why it reminds me of spring, but it just, like, reminds me of just, like... Uh, maybe because Cinco de Mayo happens in spring? Yeah, it's a Cinco de Mayo. Oh. Also, the Lysol, the spring the spring cleaning, the, the where... <laughs> <laughs> We're still trying to cover up that. <laughs> that I do like Lysol. it, though. Lysol. Whatever. Mm. I want to go golfing now. And plus, it's kind of sunny right now that we're recording. 
Yeah. So how long will you have it's this not available? Bright. So, um, so I, I made a pretty big batch. Um, it'll be through January, uh, okay. probably probably mid January. So basically, if you want to just go sit on the patio on a nice sunny day in a, front of a, a warm bright, heater, on a bright day, bright day, okay. yeah, bright day, bright day, warm heater, warm heater, and drink this and close your eyes, you will feel like because it's still gonna be cold a little bit yeah. that you got to the pool. Early, like at 8 a.m. or 9 a.m. to reserve the pool. Uh, in a summer, spring, summer, May, maybe like a Vegas, <laughs> where it's still kind of chilly, <laughs> but it's still also sunny. Bright. Bright. Anyway, it's delicious. It'll bring back those feels, and we love feels. The feelers. The feelers. Uh, Everybody's got to catch feelers now and again. We're in the, we're in the midst of football madness right now. Yeah. When we record this, when we or when we release this, yeah, we got playoffs. We've playoffs. got playoffs. We got playoffs. We've got uh, football galore, galore, galore. It's probably dominating a lot of the conversation as well as probably pandemic stuff. Uh, with football, it it made me think of something, and I want to ask you this. This is kind of the warm up question for you. Okay, Mm-mm. I think Seahawks is is who's your team. Uh, the, oh, I don't know. I feel like the Packers are your team. Why, why do I think the Packers are your team? Uh, so, little misconception. I was a huge Brett Favre fan. Okay. Ixnay, the whole scam thing. I think that was a lady Trish going after money. But I'm um, a huge Brett Favre fan. Well, first of all, wait, 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 wait. It was because of a dick pic, is what yeah. you're saying, right? It, and she took that to get money. And well, what I'm saying is right now, anyone could get money at this yeah, point. Right. I mean, we're to, this is 2020, um, man. If so, you haven't sent a dick pic in your life. Erase that part, but <laughs> I am a huge... <laughs> I am a huge Brett Favre fan. Always have been. Uh, I think he's an amazing, amazing athlete that you know has always had has a great sense of humor. He's very open. Um, I'm and, keeping that in. By and the way. he and he never, <laughs> you know, takes that uh, glory of being like you know a superstar quarterback and go, lets it go to his he, head. He, he practices with the high school team. He goes back to the colleges. Okay, and so helps okay, out. so but he has, he has a love of football. Yeah. But I feel like he. I'm not saying he needed. He let it go to his head. But he has kind of, would you say, an, a clay arrogance, a football arrogance <laughs> about himself? No, he's married, not at all. happily married. <laughs> no, not that. I mean, like an arrogance, a football arrogance. He, he loves football, all right. but I feel like he he knows he's elite. Anybody that plays at, at that type of, at that high they, level. They deserve it. You you have to have that. Who's more? You have to be the, you are the number, you are QB1. You have to have that mentality. Otherwise, QB2 will take your spot. Which they did. Uh, so, <laughs> Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, they drafted him and he sat on the bench for two years. He was a, what, a first or second round? I don't know. That's what they're doing the same thing right now, actually, probably with Aaron Rodgers. They, they drafted this they other do dude it with, for. They do it with every, you know. So, so. Uh, and then he moved on to Minnesota. Yeah. And, and he actually did pretty well in Minnesota. Did. Yeah. And then he went to the Jets. And the Jets okay. Fight. So, who's your team? Uh, University of Washington. Okay. Back. I meant NFL. Who's your NFL team? I don't have an NFL team. All right. So I get in that argument all the time. Everybody automatically assumes I'm a Seahawks fan. I don't, actually. For whatever reason, I feel like you were like a Midwest. like I'm not anti-Seahawks. So then why do I associate you with the Packers? Is it because of your love for Brett Favre? Mm -hmm. And why would I know that you have a love for Brett Favre? I don't know. I don't wear any Packers stuff. Are you a Brett (laughs) Favre? But he's your number one player? Yeah, of mm-hmm. all time. Yeah, and even during that time, he was he was the number one player. Like, like yeah, yeah. I, if if we were having a fantasy draft, you could take anybody in history. He'd be my quarterback. Yeah. Okay, so then let's say at that time when he was playing, was that the game where Matt Hasselbeck said we're going to get the ball, we're going to win, and yeah. then he, he was there? Would but, you been wearing a Seahawk jersey or a Brett Favre jersey at that time? Uh, n- neither. Maybe a Brett Favre jersey. I do have three Brett Favre jerseys. I never purchased them myself. I just had a friend that gave them to you. Yeah, Michael Manocco threw out his name there. I mean, nice. he's a great guy. He used to um he used to buy me a, a new Brett Favre jersey every year. Wow. Yeah. Shout out to him. That's yeah. very cool. Right. Spend you. I'm not. Uh, I'm one of those people. I don't spend money on that sort of thing. Right. So, no. That's why I did it for man. Sure. Well, I don't know. Growing up, when you were growing up, when you were 13, 14, 15, I'm just gonna say this right now. Okay. I don't know. Right. But this is how I'm going to pose it to you now. And then I'm going to pose the same question to you when you're 13, 14, 15. Same exact question. Okay. Hmm. Ken Baring wanted to sell the Seahawks. Uh, the Mariners almost were out of here 
because they didn't have the funding and the support until they had that playoff run uh, with Griffey and all those guys mm-hmm. back in like 94, 95. And they uh, stole their supersonic. The Sonics obviously eventually left town. We suffered through the shittiest years to get the best draft picks, and then they took them away. The, yeah, exactly. Bullshit. So, if you could go, and these, it's three. We're not talking any NHL. We're not talking MLS. We're not talking any of the other stuff. Just the, the top three, MLB, NFL, and NBA. Would you have left everything the same? Or if you could have had one of those franchises leave, but you would keep the Sonics. So basically, you're keeping the Sonics and you're giving up the Mariners or the Seahawks. Well, back then when I was 15, they were all three here. No, that's what I'm saying. Like, Answer the question as 39-year-old Sean or 40-year-old Sean. 27 27 and a half. half 27-and-a-half-year-old Sean. Jeez. Sorry about that. Right. Oof. <laughs> hey, delete that. Oh, he's leaving. So old. Oh, he's walking out the... Hey, come back. Okay, yeah, you're 27 and a half. Um, who are you keeping? Who are you tossing out? You have to toss out one. You have to toss out one. Right now, currently. Like, right now, it would bring the Sonics back if you got rid of the other two. So, I mean... One of the, one of the again, other Again, so outside perspective, I, I'm not a huge fan of any of those things. I've played a lot of baseball, so I, I'm a, you know... Baseball right. at heart, but not really a baseball fan. Right. Uh, that being said, um, basketball in general is like the worst business plan on earth. I mean, they pay those five starting players make more money than that whole entire stadium sold out every night. And you know it's not sold out every night. And then they have coaches and all the extra players, the other five players or whatever they have yeah. on their okay. bench. So I personally think that... So you like how it is. You like that we have the Mariners. I, I, miss, like the su- the I miss the Supersonics, and I think that's a, a valid argument that we suffered through crap years right. to get good draft picks to just watch them walk away. That was super frustrating because, you know, look at the um, whatever, the I don't even remember, the stupid Thunder, whatever. The, yeah. Right. And that big run where they were in the playoffs and they made the, the finals like every year for the next five years or whatever. Right. That should have been our team. So then, I would I would throw out the Sonics. Yes. And who? So you'd keep the or you let you let the Sonics leave? Yeah, and keep the Mariners and the and the Seahawks. And the Seahawks. So everything you'd keep everything the same. Sure. Yeah. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen year old Sean, same answer. Yeah, yeah. You same were answer. Yeah. so you were like, back at the time even even back then back in the nineties you were like or two thousands or wherever you are back twenty seven and a half. Yeah. Uh, but would so you would have been like okay. I'm cool with the Sonics leaving. I don't see why. I don't see why we can't have three teams, three seasons. Because it's a hypothetical question. We will have it, but I was just curious. Okay, so uh, who are you more excited about? Or I should, I guess, I should ask: Are you excited about the Kraken coming into play? Coming oh to yeah, play? I think that's going to be a great addition. Are you a hockey here. guy? Um, you know, I've gone to the Thunderbird game many times. Yeah. Um, I'm great friends with the, um, half Lion group. And I mean, they, they, um, at the, what, uh, Showware stadium, they're yeah. the official sponsors and they support the beer there. So I've gone and, you know, with our friends, with Craig Bentley and them, we've, uh, gone down there and gotten sweets and hung out there. Oh, wow. Gone to quite a few Thunderbird games. Um, I've always, always liked, you know, that's young hockey, you know, where they're playing for a spot, um, professional hockey, you know, obviously like any professional sport kind of gets more you know mundane but yeah <laughs> i feel like you don't need a warm-up i was gonna give you a warm-up but you're you're already ready to roll <laughs> we might give you a warm-up on the next one what i want to talk to you about in this episode as we're going to get into it um uh, there's going to be some shout outs obviously later on it's going to talk about some beer his uh you know that maybe not beer history but i, I, I want to do some coal street history okay uh, if that works for you, can you do Cold Street history? I kind of know it. So. Yeah, you're the <laughs> one that would know it. So uh, what was the opportunity that came up? And if we have, if maybe it's another episode, let's talk about, or maybe like, oh, hey, we are talking about this, but I can't remember. How did the whole Courier Herald building come up? Like, did you pursue that? Was that something that you heard through the grapevine. You're like, oh, shoot, I would love to be on Coal Street. Obviously, I'm Coal Street Brewery. and be oh. in further into Coal Street. Actually, this is going to be a fun conversation. Okay. Um, so uh, I was all, th- all the other 
conversation suck. Yeah. So I'm really no. happy this one's a fun well, that, conversation. This, this is the one that you should have had when you're trying to eat your egg McMuffin <laughs> you know, earlier. So this, this is actually kind of a long. So I'm just, I'm just going to sit back and drink at this point is what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. I'm happy with that too. Yeah. I, I already refilled my glass. You know, I'm, refill I'm, yours. I'm going. You're a little behind. Um, uh, so back when I was still uh, partners with Eric, um, we were looking to come downtown. We were looking to expand. Um, his wife, uh, who owns uh, Nature's Inventory, she was looking to kind of do the same thing. So we were looking at a couple different spots. And honestly, one of the spots was the Courier Herald building. Um, at the time, we looked at it, and um, I forget what year. This was probably uh, 2016, 2017, something like that. And the price that it was at was higher than everything around it. Uh, because it's one of the newer buildings. It was built in 05, uh, which in the downtown corridor, that's like... That's brand super new. Super new. Yeah, that's <laughs> like brand new for everything right. else down there. Uh, uh, other than at the opposite end, uh, the Bordeaux. Yes. Right before Bordeaux, there's that kind of bigger building. Um, yeah. It's a rehab facility now okay. or yeah, something yeah, yeah. like that. Um, but that's the newest. And so we looked at taking that one over, and the idea was like, Nature's inventory would take one side and we take the other. Okay. Uh, um, again, price wise and then zoning wise, um, it was a little more difficult to do that. Um, so nature's inventory kind of settled on. They have a downtown location now. The right. old Radio Shack or next to the next to the old Radio Shack. To, yeah, 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 one one spot up. Yeah. Um, so that's where they they purchased that, moved into that space. Right. So then Eric and I, um, kind of in the same. Thing. we were uh, looking at actually building a brewery um so the farm and feed uh what was that dells before yeah yeah it, yeah it yeah, got yeah. flattened and they they rebuilt that oh they did uh the farm and feed is a brand new building I didn't they changed that whole that. parking lot wow. and everything um but behind it um is johnson's exterior and they have a, a like a space back there that um it's always kind of been an open space mm -hmm. and so we looked at purchasing that and uh, we went to engineers we engineered a, a, a brewery it was great. Honestly, I loved it. You know, um, it was going to be a uh, two story. We'd have a whole open back. Uh, we we're going to do turf instead of grass. So it'd be green year round, had a great view of the mountain. You can go out there, hang out, um, all that sort of thing. Um, it's right off of Casey Kane or first Avenue, yeah. uh, which is right behind the library. Yeah. Yeah. Behind it is big open pasture and across the pasture was headworks. And this is, uh, so this was, uh, 2017, 2018, so Headworks was probably just right they then. Were, they weren't quite open. Right. And with our building plan, honestly, and the way it all worked out, if we had actually gone through with it, we would have been opening the new location the same time frame, like same month that Headworks would. And we would have been right across the uh, field from each other. So yeah. we could have feed off each other yeah. and support each other. I had big plans on that too. So uh, Crystal Mountain and Mount Rainier... You know, we have tour buses that go up the hill yeah. all the time. Um, how do you capture those people and keep them in town? So it's a big, straight, flat um, road right there. And so my plan, and there's a light at Garrett. So you turn left at the light. Yeah. You go around the block and you pull in, and then you just take a right right back out, right? So they pull up to the curb, let all your people off. You know, people that, you know, so it's so kind of yeah. bad demographic, but the older guys... They stay and have a beer while the little ladies, we get some golf carts and we take them downtown and they go shop for um, so antiques you, and stuff. you had a you know? full-on almost tour. I uh, had, yeah. And bringing, bringing outside people in sure. had this huge game plan. Unfortunately, uh, City of Enumclaw, with their parking restrictions, it became kind of difficult. So they, um, they wanted us to have all of the people that were coming to our venue would have to have a parking spot. So every every two people would oh, have to have a parking spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't know if you looked at a parking spot. It's 17 foot long right, by, right, uh, by right. what, five feet wide? A little that difficult. That takes a lot of space, right? So then that meant that we had to jack up our building and make our building three stories. With a garage yeah. in the bottom? And every time you go up a story, um, first of all, then we would also have to have a water retention pond or a water retention tank. Because we didn't have that much property, so it'd have to be a tank. So then you have to dig a tank. That's you know more money. Right. Uh, every time you go up a floor, seismic. You know, for earthquakes, you have more expenses. So what we were looking at is like a seven hundred thousand dollar building, and then it turned into a two million dollar building. Yeah, that's a huge jump. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So obviously that didn't really work out. So we uh, backed out on that, and then circled back around, and that was that kind of the time where. 
um, Eric and I were kind of discussing like whether we were going to keep going as partners. Um, and then he, he had other stuff that he wanted to get into and dabble in. Um, and so if we, we had done that, we would s- still be partners. Yeah. Um, but because we didn't do that, it was like, well, he, open the door to yeah, he just, his yeah. ventures mm-hmm. and also, you. and then, so then on my own one-on-one, then I circled back around to the uh, the courier building. Um, again, initially I was going to purchase it. I still have kind of a uh, first right of refusal on the building, but the building has some stuff that needs to up- be upgraded. Yeah, fire sprinklers. I don't know if I talked about that, but fire sprinklers are kind of a pain in the butt and very expensive. And, okay. Um, but there's some things that need to do before I can take over the whole building. Gotcha. Um, so it's a progression thing. Uh, so that's why I moved in. Taking over what I have, and then I worked gonna... on it for the past year. Yep, continuing to work and on I've, it. And I would have, yeah, been so much more farther along if and it wasn't for taking over the whole building. Right, but right. That at this at this point, you know, I am where I am. So yeah, Kay. that's why that's a really great question that there. Yeah, that's, mm, yep. Okay, it's kind of the progression of uh, how we were gonna move downtown and 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 get into that. Now we teased this last week. Or week and a half, I think it was a week ago, of Bordeaux Wine Bar, and them moving, and you're a you're a huge support. And I, see, the, here's the here's the surprising thing, a little BTS behind the scenes for you guys out there, all the Patreon subscribers out there that that do this. So I'm gonna I'm gonna send this to you guys. I'll tell actually tell you guys, everyone, this right now, real quick. Go to Patreon and subscribe. <laughs> but just this is a free one, giving you a freebie. So. I was super surprised when we were recording these types of podcasts, the brouhaha and this and that with Sean, where he would say like, oh, yeah, no, I love that Headworks is down the street. And I love the brewery in uh, Buckley. And I and I love Black Diamond. And it was – I was like, well, what? like why? Like aren't these guys your, uh, you know, your competition? And he's like, no, dude. This is what I love about it is that we become a destination. So these types of people that are into brew, uh, you know, beers and and craft brews and this and that, they're gonna make it a, a point to come down on a Saturday and they're gonna hit up all these different places. all these other yeah. places, and I'm gonna be a spot that they're gonna come hit yeah. up. That's yeah. great news for me. You look at big picture now, and so that was huge. So you know, as someone who you think you think of monopoly, you think of like, oh no, you don't want to have any competition. No, it's actually great that people come down here. I remember when I worked at Safeway. And they were building a, a Fred Meyer across the street. And I was like, oh, crap. They're going to dig into our sales. And our and my manager was actually thrilled about it. And I'm like, why are, why are you thrilled about this? And he goes, because we become a shopping center. Like, people will come here now. Like, that's great news for us. So when you have competition, it actually increases – business believe it or not weird weirdly they're not going to come to your store and the other store for the same things they're going to go for different things but that's going to bring them down there because they know that they can get one thing from one area and another thing that you specialize in and so uh which is which okay i don't know this stuff so it was is mind-blowing to me but now bordeaux wine bar coming in uh they are moving from further down cole street where they're at the old casey kane building Mm mm-hmm and now they're moving to the spot and center area. Was that the one that you were talking about? The you you were saying that that's not the one that you guys were looking at for the. Oh uh, no no. Okay, that's not big enough for a brewery. So mm-hmm. that's. But uh, it's a, uh, it's a great location. Uh, honestly, it, I'm I'm loving it. Uh, it's going to be right out my back door. Right. You pop out my back door. Cut down just a bit of an alley. Go across the street. It's right there. They have a great outdoor, you know, there's a little uh, kind of like a little waiting pool back there. And, yeah. You know, in the summertime, it's going to be great sitting around that. Yeah. That's a, you know, it's very eclectic, but it's a really cool little building. Um, Dude, I'm stoked only because, you know, I think that's going to be good for Bordeaux Wine Bar. But I think sure. it's going to be good yeah. for you guys, too. Yeah. Like, it's going to be, this is the hub now. Yeah. If you want to go get some drinks and go from place to place on yeah. a Saturday night. And they're going to right ra- ra- in between me and Edward. Oh. So you, you get some beer. Go get some wine, hop over, get some get beer. Get more beer, come back. You know, everyone's – and it's going to create more seating. You know, there's going to be times – And and Bordeaux does have beer too. I'm, you know, Bordeaux has beer everybody now. Everybody thinks – It's just wine, wine bar. Right, right, there is beer there. 
right. And then, and we've had them on. You know, we've 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 hosted we've hosted as full body cast people. I'm excited for about this too. This is another sponsor. It's going to be right down there. We have bigger events or more events. And if we, and you know, if one night it doesn't work at Coal Street, it might work at Bordeaux and vice versa. Okay. So um, I'm pumped. Like I'm stoked for you guys. So. Uh, so that uh, we were like last week, we were like, "Oh, hey, ooh, do we like this or not?" I yes, I like this. I love it. I, Good. I think it's gonna be great. Good. And I, I've said it before. Like, um, I I enjoy it. You know, I talk beer, I drink beer. Uh, right. Unfortunately, right now I'm I'm the only one's working, so I can't drink as much in my own establishment. <laughs> That's always a difficult thing as right. the owner. I have to be careful. Uh, I can drink, but I can't ever be intoxicated. Right. So oh, free um, beer for everyone. Yeah. Oh, the no, no. no, it's not that. <laughs> I'm not that guy. I don't do that. So I never do that, no matter how hammered I am. Uh, but uh, but it's, it's it's great that I have a nice little establishment that's uh, like one door down. I can go over there and you know have a couple extra drinks and you know sit there and hang out with them, uh, and vice versa. They can get out of their spot and come over and hang out at my spot, you know. We just, you know, bounce ideas off of each other, and we can do some cross promotions, some yeah. cross campaigns, different, you know, cross events, podcasts, and stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah, all yeah. kinds of stuff. And, and the cool super thing, exciting. the cool thing about them is, and that they're they, super open to doing that sort of thing. Yeah, they are. <clears throat> they're just, they're just. I'm excited about it too. So, uh, um, anyway, that's that's kind of how I, I, that's what I wanted to say. Here's another thing that I want to do. I don't know if you I, want. I believe that's going to be. They're opening in February, give or take. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. <clears throat> Here's here's what the Enumclaw discussion board has taught me, okay, <laughs> is that people, first off, are funny. Secondly, Looking. they, they, they want to have a good time. And thirdly, is that there's some single people out there that uh, I am wanting to do once the pandemic lifts and we can do some – COVID restrictions lift and we can do some like events – Singled out, like single single events. Yeah, I want to do a singled out. Well, actually, this this leads into um, I kind of had an idea for like a little spinoff. Okay, the, well, spinoff we, podcast. Okay, but, well, we'll get into that in a second because I want to tell you my idea, then you tell me your idea. Okay, okay. Singled out at Cole Street, where if you guys remember, singled out, you'd have that one single person. This is MTV back in the day, early two thousands, <laughs> and they'd be sitting there, and you'd have like. 50 people that were like also single they would be like lined up in in like this large circle behind this person like a half circle behind this person and there was like different steps you could get to to getting into the final round with this single person it's almost like a match.com before match.com was a thing my favorite color is blue the you know it's stuff like that like if you've done this, basically lining you up with someone that you have the same, uh, basically the same type of similarities and, and interests and all that. I want to do, I've got like four people already that we could do a singled out with. <laughs> Females, Desi B is one of them. She thinks that the Inglot Discussion Board, and I do believe as well, has her future husband on it. But I think it's this event <laughs> that's going to create that. Uh, I've got other buddies out there and pals out there that that I could do this for too. I want to do a dating event singled out. I would love to be the is it Chris Hardwick or whoever that guy's name is. I'd love to be that guy who's just. And we need a Jenny McCarthy. So if anyone out there thinks that they're like the next Jenny McCarthy, Holly Graff obviously thinks she's the next Jenny McCarthy. Maybe Holly Graff's doing it too because she's already in a relationship. So we host this thing. I'm down. I cannot wait to do singled out events. At Cole Street, it's going to happen. <laughs> I'm I'm fully convinced it's going to happen. Okay, right. so now I've told you my my idea. Tell me your idea. All right, my idea is for a podcast. So you have all kinds of different levels of podcasts that you do, just different, sure, right. different subject matter, that sort right. of thing. Right. Well, the one thing that you don't have is like a a, date, a single one, a dating one, a dating one. Okay, but. I have a different spin on it because... Are um, you hosting it? Because I'm married. I'm a pretty fun guy about this sort of thing. You're a mushroom. Yeah. So Fun guy. Fun guy. <laughs> fun guy. <laughs> uh, no, so my idea is um, worst dates or worst relationships you've ever been in. Um, so I'm... Yeah. I'll. Oh, I'll, so we talk about the worst things. Yeah. So I'll, I'll put myself up as one of the hosts, but I'd like a, another female host. I have That's, a... Okay. I have a, you have an idea of a few. I have possibly a, one. Yeah. 
Okay. I've already reached out, but we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Um, but the whole idea is um, like guys and girls submit their worst date or their worst relationship experience. Yes. Right? And so if it's if a girl submits it, then the guy reads it and then explains, well, With, yeah, I can see why the guy the did The guy that. went this route. Duh. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You're totally like scaring it, you know, right. so on and so forth. And then vice versa, the girl does that sort of thing. Huh. Yeah. So myself, I have some... What's the what's the, wait wait? I'm all about names like brouhaha and stuff like that. Uh, what's the name? Have you thought of a name yet of this thing? Are you creative enough for that one yet? I am creative enough. No, for I know. That, but I'm I creative haven't enough. About that. I mean, have you created? Listen, Any, this anyway, is like the I'm so, drinking beers. I meant to say, have you created it further so, enough? I'm just pointing out the. You took that as an insult. <laughs> no, we don't. I'm putting I'm, out, out, I'm putting <laughs> out the feelers out. for ammo Sean, for this before we do this. Time out, right, Sean? You're creative. I only. Okay. Yeah, I'm confirming that. Keep going. I only have so many stories of my own, so I mean, I'm putting out the feelers, so we need to have people like you know submitting content, so we can have a nice good lineup before we even start that. So I feel like we can do quite a few in one one podcast, dude. That would be uh, so. I, I think that would be great. Wor- so you're saying worst experiences and then getting the perspective worst, from worst, the guy. Worst date and then and then worst relationship, like different things that happened. Um, I already sent out on Facebook a couple feelers. You you want to hear the two examples that I put Absolutely. out there? Absolutely. All right, so worst date. And this didn't happen to me at all. You know, this is just oh, your cousin in Canada. This, yeah. this is from somebody else. Def, not you. Yeah. So run into this girl. I I, I know her, um, and I'm like, hey, you know what's going on? And she's like, oh, hey, you know, like, hey, you want to hang out? She's like, well, I'm headed over to this bar, and I'm like, cool. I got to finish up some stuff. I'll be over there in like ten minutes. Walk into the bar, look around. And, you know, there's like one dude in there. I'm like, ask the bartender. I'm like, hey, is there a cute girl that came in here? This dude that's over at this table in the corner, he's like, oh, yeah, she's in the bathroom. I'm like, all right, well, obviously he noticed her, right? Right. She comes out of the bathroom, comes over, gives me a big hug, whispers in my my ear. She's like, yeah, so my ex-husband's here, but it's all right because that means I can drink as much as I want. He's, he'll give me a ride home later. What? Yeah, right? First date. Deuces. I would have went with that. <laughs> no. I would have seen where that would, night would have led. No, right? <laughs> no, no. So we need a girl's so, perspective on that, so or a guy's the, perspective on that. So the girl, the girl would read that and say, "Oh well, t- of course, you know, right. it's a free ride home. Why not? Right. We live in the same spot. I mean, just because we're exes, <laughs> right? Or right? The, something along those lines. Or from the girl's girl's perspective, she's like, "Well, I'm making him jealous, too. Who? The ex husband. <laughs> but why? Why is the ex husband there? It's an ex husband. Oh, right. did she invite him? I don't know. Oh, I so didn't, stick didn't stick around. Well, that's what I my cousin didn't out. stick around long enough to find that. Out. I, <laughs> <laughs> All right, so finally a ha ha in the brew ha. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, worst relationship situation. So okay, dating girl, couple months, right? Yeah, we're out on this date. She sees this girl walk by. She's like, "Oh, those are cute shoes." She gets on the old Amazon, orders them up. About a about a week later, sends a text message. Hey, those cute shoes really came. Just came in. Check them out. She takes a picture. Looking at her shoes, and then there's another two shoes right in between her feet. Why? Because she's sitting on a dude's lap. Uh, wow. Deuces. <laughs> that happened to you again? <laughs> nope, cousin. That's crazy. That doesn't make <laughs> sense. That's like deliberately showing like, hey, I'm with somebody. Uh, right? Wow. That's harsh. No. It's fun times. Well, that's harsh. Ouch. Anyway, anyway looking Hold for on, stories hey. like that. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Why would anyone do that? <laughs> That's like mean. <laughs> Except that they were trying to get you back. Were they trying to get you back for anything? Uh, I don't know. Or the cousin I, back? I feel like we were still. The cousin was still with them. So back. Oh, the cousin still. Oh, they were dating at the time when that happened, right? So maybe that's so weird. Another pair of shoes. Uh, here's a weird one. Can I give you a weird one? Sure. This is a weird one. I'd love perspectives on this. So this this happened at my old my old uh, work way back in the day. Uh, this this dude that worked he kind of came out of nowhere worked in one of the departments he was commenting on one of these like i i think he was probably like 32 and she was probably like 22 so about 10 years different she's younger very pretty and he's like hey uh your wife or he goes my wife uh I think has the same size feet as you. Would you mind at break, if we took our break together, coming out to my car 
And then I can, you know, you can try these on to see if they fit. Monitor her shoes. And at the time, it was very uh, like, yeah, okay, that makes sense. Like you, like you think that we have the same, and you bought these for whether it was a birthday, anniversary, Christmas, whatever. I'll try. Yeah, absolutely. I'll go out to the. You know, they seem harmless enough. So she's got big feet. No, she actually had actually smaller feet. This dude was a feet guy. It turned out. Oh. So he, when she went out there, like he pops out these shoes, and he's like, "Can I take a pic? You know, as you take these." put these on take these off can i take a picture to kind of see you know side by side and then he's like can i just get a picture of your feet by itself and then like he he, then he started getting like weirdly like hey could you put your foot over here like all these feet angles and this and that and then at this point she realizes okay this guy's just into feet like this guy's not like trying like he's taking every foot picture known to man like would anyone rationally worry so much honestly if you think about it you're like well i'm going to do my best guess maybe if i think someone has the same size foot as my wife sure i'll just see hey how does this fit is it comfortable does it hurt is it eh?" you know like that shoe but i'm not going to ask i'm not going to take pictures of their feet you know i'll have someone just try it on does it hurt is it tight is it but that's it i still feel like that's not going to work anyway every person's different about their shoes exactly Right. Just give it to them if they like it. Leave the receipt. But there's yeah. nobody out there going like, yeah, leave the receipt. Just give it to them. Here, I guessed. I hope this fits. If it doesn't, we can take it back. Here's the receipt. Yeah. But you're not going to take 30 pictures of their feet. <laughs> now, I would like a perspective of somebody else out there thinking, well, actually, technically, I would take 30 pictures. Of them, and I'm not a feet person. Side note, <laughs> I'm not a feet person. Like that, I, I hate feet. Feet are the grossest things in the world, in my opinion. Please keep those back on. Put put those, get those out of my face. <laughs> want I don't want toe jam. I don't want to see those toes. Anyway, I'm just not. Yeah. So, I think yeah, I think I think you're onto something. There's plenty of weird ass stories out there. Yeah, that's what people. I'm looking for. Weird a ass comedy relief dates. Yeah, than our boring podcast. Yeah, and and no no ne- no names unless you want the names out there. Cousin, you know, be like, cousin for Canada always. Travis Kenny. Travis Kenny w- took me out on a drive. That was that's one. If you ever want to listen to a, a crossover podcast from Full Body Cast, Hall with Hallback, I do tell some creepy dating stories of the back of the day when I used to take girls out. Yeah, yes, your car broke down. Yeah, okay. really break down. All right, you know we uh-huh. could move. Sleep on, on the couch. Uh-huh. Yeah, those things happen. Uh. Anyway, yeah, I like your idea. So we might we might be hitting up another host and seeing what we can do with that. So send Sean McDonald, <laughs> Cole Street, drop in for the brewer, grab a little beer, and then write down your little me- you're like this yeah. is what happened to me, and we'll better, read it. Yeah, written down. Yeah, right, write it down. Hand it to him. Go in there. Message a Facebook message. Yeah. Message full buddy cast if you want. We'd love to hear the creepy, weird dating stories that you may not understand. Like, why did this happen? What dating was it or that like, happened? Or weird things in a relationship. Yeah, like, and then maybe somebody else could shed the the light on it who is from the perspective of either a male or a female, whatever is the opposite. I like that. It's a good. It's a great idea. Always a good idea. Um, so we're getting we're we're not almost to the end, but we are close to the end to wrap things up. Uh, one thing that I wanted to talk about uh, with you is uh, some sort of Karen story. We don't have to mention Karen, the name, but have you had a Karen through this? Every I think every store, every restaurant, my, my daughter has told me, like my wife has told me, everyone has told me some sort of a Karen story, whether it concerns a mask, whether it concerns waiting, whether it concerns uh building use or not building use or this or that have you had an experience and let me tell you this my 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 mom's name is karen she hates this term uh so i tread lightly with this name karen but have you had a karen experience in the past nine months ten months of this whole darn thing oh yeah i've, I've had quite a few karen experiences any one that sure. you feel comfortable sharing i'm sure you don't want to share well, every karen experience but is there any one that sticks out in your mind i already put put one on the discussion board okay so we can talk that. can we talk about that yeah, one to- totally uh so this girl i i actually knew uh we went to high school together she dated one of my somewhat friends so it's not like total stranger 
know exactly who this person is. She actually happens to be a nurse, so you feel like she has a little better perspective. Holograph, on stuff. okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> and it's changed now because I, I legit went to her and said, hey, I'm not going to allow this anymore. Okay. But she would post up um, right out on my picnic table when I had my tent in front of my a brewery. Uh, is this summer? Table. Is this yeah? So this was the end. Of, so this was September. Okay, so up to about September. Okay, uh, before she finally stopped doing this. Gotcha. And she's also written the Courier Herald twice. I'm just pointing. And that she's out. a friend of yours? <clears throat> no, <laughs> was a friend. Uh, a person that I know. Oh, I, I never said. I never said friend. Just okay. person right. that I know. Um, and we're Facebook friends, so she may or may not. You said Facebook days. friends. <laughs> um. But, uh, yeah, so she would sit there, and anybody that would walk in my door without a mask on, she would rant at them. Oh, really? Um, Straight up? Like, not take a picture and, like, pose it later? Nope. She'd she rant at them. Right then and, and there. And, and half shame the people, them. Half the people that came in are, like, kind of looking over their shoulder, like, what was she saying? And I'm like, I, I have to tell them. I'm like, you know, don't worry about this, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, it even, there's another little piece of that, too. So people that I know, so these were friends of mine. Uh, went out and kind of asked her, like, hey, um, so can we sit at this table? Because she's sitting there by herself. And yeah. It's a, you know, eight-foot table. Six feet. And uh, she's like, well, you can, but just so you know, my uh, my babysitter uh, was tested positive for COVID. And they kind of like, okay, whatever, and just sit down. She's like, and then the whole time, she's like, well, just so you know, you, you know, if you were wearing a mask, you'd be safe. Well, why aren't you wearing a mask? Right. She, oh. Well, I'm sitting at a table drinking, so Okay. Okay, she's so, like, well, you okay. sat at her table. It turns into this whole argument. Ugh. So, one, she's complaining that other people, and then I didn't know this initially, but then later on, those people came in and let me know that she said that. So Weird. then the next time she comes in, I go, I'm sorry, why are you coming in here? If you know that you're somebody that you're connected to has COVID, you shouldn't be out. Right. You should be quarantined. Right. You're a nurse, Right. Right. So she's the one that's trying to promote oh mass gosh. and all this, but oh then she's gosh. telling people that she has COVID. So it's it's like Ugh. a it's like a <laughs> you can't have it both ways. Um, but anyway, um, she continued to do her or her dad would come down and do that, and they continued to do that for several weeks. I kind of posted it on the discussion boards, and right. had some people come down um, because it's one of those like if you're yeah, I don't know yeah ah uh, yeah. But I politely just asked her, and then the next time I wasn't so polite and said, well. This tent and is mine, and that tent is the Rainiers, and both of us would not like you to be in our. So area. you actually yeah. tre- not trespassed her, but said, "Please move along." Please move along before we have to trespass. Gotcha. Her. And has so she been back since? She has not. So she frequents another establishment that's up the hill. Gotcha. Okay. From our location. Gotcha. Um, and I I feel like she does kind of the same thing in that over there too. at that point. It's kind of annoying. He asked me. Well. Th- I guess what I've learned this whole pandemic is that you're going to have, like, I always knew the extremes, like when there are some people that are extremely religious or some people are extremely uh, political. And even in the political realm, they're extremely right or extremely left and this and that. But for me, what I've learned is that there are some serious rule followers that brings me back to, like, elementary school. Like when you're sitting and it's like there's some people in the class that are like suck ups to the teacher. I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to do this. I've got the, you know there there are these types of people and the other people that are kind of like well I'm going to make my own decisions. I'm going to be involved. I want to make my own decisions though, based on what's going to benefit me. And they're not the suck ups in a sense. You know they're nice. They're polite. They're people that that use manners. And then there's got the other people that are like, F this, I'll do whatever the frig I want. You know, and they're the ones that are probably more than likely going to the principal's office more often. And so it's it seems like it's coming back to me. I'm starting to see these types of people that uh, are like, holy cow. Like this was the tattle. I remember this type of person <laughs> being a tattletale at recess. Yeah. And it wasn't anything that was ever concerning them, so to speak. Oh, they're spitting over there. They're not supposed to spit on the playground. That's like 40 feet away from everybody. The person, yeah, has to hawk a loogie and they have to go hawk a loogie in the corner because they're they're doing it by a tree. They're not doing it on people. Yeah, there's no spitting at recess, but what are you going to do when you got like something that comes up? You're just going to swallow. No, you got to go spit it out somewhere. 
And it's, oh, Mrs. Johnson. I saw, you know, it, and that's what some of these people are turning into. I feel like I'm back in elementary school with some of these people. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's, a, it's a new time. You know, turn in thy neighbor. That's not a that's, turn. In, turn in thy neighbor. That's been you know Americans. Yeah. We tend to the neighbor's house is burning down. Oh shit! It's kind of hot over there. Right. Uh, versus now, it's like concerned with your neighbor. Oh, right. whoa! Oh, well, yeah. well, they have more than four people, or they have more than yeah, six people. It's ridiculous. Uh, Stupid. A little different. Me as a business owner, I have to take the kind of the high road right. and accept both sides of the people. Sure. That's why I, I you know recommend masks but if you have a you know you have an issue where you can't wear a mask i mean hipaa we'll, laws and we, this and that it's like you we have welcome, to like, yeah. welcome you as well right shout outs before we go uh yeah so i wanted to shout out some of the downtown uh business owners that have okay. uh, been very um active in the community yeah uh olivia from the mint uh she's amazing uh her and her husband scott have done a lot um you know building things uh bringing out things and uh supporting our downtown you know, trying to sure. s- uplift our downtown mm-hmm. corridor. Yeah. Uh, that's the same with uh, Amy and Ryan Lundeen. Um, Amy owns the local. Yep. Uh, Ryan owns SPS Striping. Uh, they've been great. Uh, Ryan has a lot of equipment that he donates, his generators, his, you know, the stage that's out there. They've, they've built that. They've that's on their, awesome. on his trailer. They yeah. donate that sort of thing. Also kind of a newer guy is uh, Timothy Duhart, I don't know okay. how to say his last name, but he's uh, has Timothy Duhart Photography. He's been super active in the community. Like he honestly came to one of our first meetings, and he's like, "Hey, I I didn't even know that there was this much stuff that needs to be down done downtown." And it's been great that he can come out and help us on all that. Yeah. Um, and then of course Dave uh, from the music store, Enumclaw Music, great guy. has always been yeah. like kind of a founding little spot in Fun downtown. Guy. Yeah. Uh, you know he you know obviously supports a lot of music and helps that sort of thing right. and then uh council members um council well, members. you go for all you're, just, yeah. you're, going, you're going the full well, meal deal right well, now this is our this is I our gotta little, pee. this is our little <laughs> uh, our little community our, our little uh, group that really supports downtown obviously anthony wright is very um he's on a lot of the uh, enum club boards Even discussion he's, board yeah yeah he's um he's putting out the stats of the covid he's yeah. on top of all that keeping us informed um, yeah trying to be very vocal about what the city's doing that sort of thing yeah. Um, and then a little, little quieter is Chance Lafleur. He's also okay. a uh, city council member. He's kind of the backbone of like um, getting things done, actually getting the city to come out and get things in place and do that sort of thing. So I awesome. just want to shout out all those people because uh, they're doing everything that not everybody sees. Thank you very much, guys. We do appreciate Anthony Wright. He does go out the discussion board. I always pretend like, hey, what's going on here? And then he, like, I think one time he was on vacation and like he actually did post. He's like, hey, I'm on vacation, buddy. Like, chill out. <laughs> I felt kind of bad about that. Now he has an awesome beard from vacation. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, shout out to all them. Thank you very much. Thank you for the Eden Claw. I'm going to do that too. Shout out to, to Eden Claw City, uh, the City Council, whoever's allowing these types of of outdoor shopping experiences and, and and types of things to keep generating the the uh, kind of the feel we have yeah, our downtown to feel keep back, it going you know? we have we, like we, a hallmark you know it, not a do. lot of towns really have that you we know, do actual downtown corridor yeah so super super thrilled with them and the, their decision making during this pandemic they've kept it safe they've kept regulations in place but they've also allowed for creativity Mm-hmm. In keeping uh, keeping that shopping experience uh, very uh, localized and and uh, and, ke- and keep the uh, Enum Claw atmosphere, you know, hometown hometownish and all that too. So, shout out! Thank you so much for listening, everybody. Appreciate appreciate Sean at McDonald and Cole Street. Go hit them up. Say Full Buddy Cast or hashtag Full Buddy Cast and get them going on there. They'll give you that VIP treatment. Appreciate you guys, and uh, we'll be recording some more today. I got to go, though. (laughs) Have a great day. All right. Cheers. Making your way in the world today, you really need a pod. Why don't you put your headphones in and give this one a shot? Wouldn't you like to just listen away? And go to a place where everybody knows who you are. Listen to two guys brew, ha ha. Cold Street Brewery and Full Buddy Cast, two of the greatest names. Why don't you go and listen to this episode?